We certainly need more black doctors in our community. I think the, uh, the number is about 5% of all doctors are black in this country. So how did this idea, the first of its kind, by the way, spawn between uh, you and Meharry? Well, good morning. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is a partnership that came into fruition based on the lack of African-Americans in the medical field. So we have a celebrated uh, program of partnership between Tennessee State University and Meharry Medical College that allows students to fast track their three-year degree, receive an undergraduate degree from Tennessee State University, and then go into a four-year program at Meharry Medical School or Dental mm. School. So it's focused on establishing a pipeline of African-American doctors and dentists so they'll be able to provide that essential care that's needed in underserved communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not saying, and you're not certainly saying that, you know, white doctors can't help us, but we do desperately want mm. to seek care from people who look like us, who understand us, because of course, as you know, President Glover, so many uh, black and brown people are not competent in the medical system. And we see that, right, with COVID, mm. the vaccine, all of it, the disparity. How will this help us gain confidence in our providers mm. as black people? Well, you're, you're right. There is a historical distrust in the medical establishment that, that dates back to when uh, Africans were brought to our country as slaves. But, you know, there were different uh, initiatives and incidents in our country, like the Tuskegee incident, where Tuskegee, mm. where uh, we were just tested uh, unmercifully and, and without permission. Uh, for syphilis, gonorrhea, that's just, just one example. There's a lack of confidence in the system. So we wanted to have an educational program to when people see others who look like us, who look like them, that makes it a little bit, that makes it more palatable, that distrust has to, we're trying to educate and, and wane away at that, that, that distrust is in the system. And there's yeah, just a lack of African-American physicians and dentists anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's, the, that's the whole thing because, you know, growing up when you're a child, you know, the first thing you do when you're playing well, what I want to be when I grow up, a lot of kids say, I want to be a doctor. So why do you think that number is so low? Just 5% uh, of all doctors are black doctors. Why, why do you believe that number is, is so low in our community? But this is typical across the board in high demand medical and technology fields. Uh, there's limited access, limited resources. Uh, that's why HBCUs are promoting STEM courses. And that's why this program is so vital. We promote those sci the science courses. So, well, all courses are important, but we know that the science, technology, engineering, math, we know those are some high demand areas. And because there's such a limited number of resources available for African-Americans, uh, so we make sure that we mm. push those, that those areas and try to steer students to major in the areas that can lead to professions such as this. We certainly hope that this effort, and we believe it's going to be successful, but what can you tell us as patients, right? You know, we're mm. not doctors, but, you know, I was with one Dr. Jackie here, who's a fantastic doctor here in Atlanta on the reality show Married to Medicine. And she was talking about advocating for yourself as black and brown people. What can you tell us about how to do that, even as it relates to, you know, COVID and the pandemic and everything else, the decision to get vaccinated, which I don't even think is, is that really a decision? Are we going to even debate that? But some people are. Mm -hmm. It's that lack of trust. I mean, historical, historically, there's been that, that distrust. But, you know, it, it dates back to discrimination in the healthcare profession. Mm -hmm. you know, there's been such a massive and overt discrimination among African Americans, mm -hmm. against African Americans. Mm -hmm. When we say we, uh, the COVID cases were higher in African Americans, yes, but not necessarily because there was high blood pressure or diabetes or respiratory mm -hmm. challenges. It's because it goes back to the beginning when there was there was unfair treatment, there was disparity in healthcare. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that now it's come home to roost. As a result, yes, you have mm -hmm. high blood pressure. Yes, you have various diseases that are more common in African Americans because of that 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 discriminatory treatment early on. So now it's it's coming to fruition in a negative manner. 
And so mm-hmm. it's, you have to, the education process is vital. And when you see African-Americans who look like you, when I got to Nashville, I look for a black dentist. I look for a black doctor, my black lawyer, black CPA. You, we, have to, we have to come back to who we are as a professional people and, and support each other in our profession, in our everyday lives. Yeah, support them, and, and, and sometimes they just understand you a, a little bit better. Like like Sharon said, we're not uh, disregarding what the white dentists and the white doctors do, but I think sometimes when you go to a black doctor or a black therapist, they just kind of understand and they get your struggle a little bit more. Mm-hmm. We was talking about the, num- the, the low numbers, and it's even worse for black male doctors. I think that number is under 3%. Yeah. Uh, is there an effort to get more black men in the medical profession? I know what you're doing is overall, but is there even more of a push to go after black men? It is. You know, the, we had a most uh, beautiful experience. And one of our alums uh, sent an email to just one email. And it just went viral. <laughs> the email said, we have several young ladies. We need more young men to apply for this. The response has been overwhelming. So we have quite Mm. a few males who have applied now, and we're really appreciative of that because somehow the table has flipped and there are more women applying. I think there's still more male doctors, but there are more is growing with the number of females that are entering the profession. So we're trying to, at the undergraduate level, to get them now just out of high school and they're coming to college, put them on a fast track program. Mm. We have a degree in three. But they finish in three years. And, and mm. unlike some programs where you go three years to one school and go into another to, to med school, this one you actually do get a degree and then go to, mm. to medical school at Meharry. Mm. Then some other, we're going to partner with other institutions. But right now, we're pushing the TSU Meharry collaboration because that's where we're thinking yeah. that we, we can have the most effect when, with the confidence building. When you see African Americans, doctors, and dentists in underserved communities, in our communities. I mean, that's a very special plus for us. So we're looking for that. Then we named it after Levi Watkins, a, a noted, uh, I mean, worldwide uh, surgeon who was the first to successfully mm-hmm. implant an automatic heart defibrillator in a human to, you know, it shocks mm-hmm. the heart back to life. And, and we named mm-hmm. it after Levi Watkins Institute. And it's just amazing. The response has been so overwhelming. And so we are we're really appre- we're appreciative of that of that fact. And Levi Watkins is a, T- a, a TSU graduate, so we're just very happy there that we can right push there. that under Absolutely. his. Absolutely. 